Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine Before tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to display an AI's health in a widget hovering above or floating above their head. So I have done a tutorial on this previously, however it wasn't too great. There are many ways in which I can improve upon it as it's quite a couple months old now, coming close to a year. So what I'm doing is I'm going to improve upon that video. So in this, each AI will have their own individual health displayed in their own individual health bar above their head and we'll have it appear and disappear on and off screen whenever we're close enough to the AI so it's not going to be there all the time. So let me hit play and I'll show you what it's going to look like. So you can see we have our AIs over there, they're just standing there, none of them have any health above their heads. If I walk up to them, this one's now got the health, this one has and so on and so forth when we're close enough to them. You can make the health bar bigger, smaller, a different colour, anything like that and in this example I'm just going to walk into them to take damage. So when I do, you see the health bar goes down as they're taking damage like so. And this does actually represent their health. As you see, it's reached zero. He's now dead. So this will happen to all of them. As you see, they all have their own individual health bar. So that one's got half health. These two don't. So this will work perfectly. And the code I'm doing to damage them is just an adaption of my punching tutorial, where I'm simply just walking into them. And I do plan on advancing and improving that punching story in the future as well, as that original code doesn't work too well with this. So I will be improving that in the future to make it more efficient. But without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what you want to do is you'll obviously want to have your own AI. So I already have one here because I already have the code in for taking damage and everything in there. But if you don't have one, you can just duplicate your character blueprint to then have your own AI and you can change the code inside of that and there you have an AI, just duplicate the character blueprint. But I assume you've probably already got your AI as you're now doing this. So I already have one and I've placed them in the level here. And I do have videos on creating AI as well if you don't have it. But once you do have it, we're going to right click Go to user interface, create a widget blueprint as we want to create the health bar. I'm going to name this one AI Health Widget. You name this whatever you like and then open it up straight away, not delete it, sorry. Open it up. In here, we want to just add a progress bar. I'm going to put this one in the middle and I'm going to use the size which I made when I was creating this code, which for me is about 75 on the X and 15 on the Y. Again, use whatever size you want it to be. I'm going to anchor it to the middle. So you may want this to be bigger, smaller, anything along those lines. In fact, I might make it just a tad bit bigger, like so. Again, anchoring it to the middle of the screen. So now we have our progress bar like that. You can change the color if you want, increase the percent just to make sure it's working. So I'm going to have it as left to right, and I'm going to make it red, so it's a health bar. So that looks good. With it still selected, you see we have progress and percent. We're going to hit the bind next to percent and create binding. In here, what we're going to do is we're going to right click the return value, promote it to a variable, naming it health, compile that, and we're going to change this default value to be the AI's health. So what the AI will start with, which for me is going to be 100. So the AI will start with 100 health. Out of this, I'm going to get a divide, so a float divided by a float, and we're going to divide it by 100, connecting that into the return value. And the reason we're dividing it by 100 is because the progress bars go from 0 to 1, not 0 to 100. So to get it from 0 to 100 to 0 to 1, we need to get it as a decimal, so obviously dividing it by 100. So if we have 100 divided by 100, we have 1. If we have 50 divided by 100, it's 0.5, which is halfway through the progress bar and halfway through our health. So that's why we're doing that. We can compile, save, and close the widget, as that's all we need to do in there. So now we're going to open up our AI blueprint, which I have here. So again, for me, that's AI health above head here. And what we're going to do is go to the viewport, and we're going to add in some components. So let's hit Add Component, and I'm going to add a widget under user interface there and I'm just going to leave its name as widget but you can name it health widget if you want. What we're going to do is under widget class we're going to change it from non to be our AI health widget or whatever you've named it and you can see we now have this widget in here like so. That's the size I'm going to move it to where I want which I think there is going to be good just above their head but you can see if we move around it just stays facing that way and we can't see it from the back which you might want if you do leave it as this but if you want it to always be facing the player we can change the space from world to screen. So it's always facing the player's screen, which is perfect. But again, if you want it to stay facing the same direction as the enemy, just leave it as world. But I'm going to have it as screen like so. I'm going to compile that. And next, I want to make it so that we can only see this if we're close enough to the AI. So to do that, I'm going to deselect the widget, add a component, and add a sphere collision like so. Increasing this to the size I want, which I think about six will be good for me. So I think that size is good, maybe a bit bigger of 7. So if the player is in this radius around the enemy, the player will be able to see the enemy's health. 
which is going to be good for me instead of just being able to see it everywhere. Once we've done that, we can compile, go to the event graph, and what we're going to do now is create a reference to this widget. Because with this widget, we can't actually access what is inside the widget class. So we want to do something differently. So to do this, I'm going to go off of event begin play, which I have here. If you don't have this, you can just get event begin play by right clicking and searching for it. And I already have some code here. I don't need a sequence. I can just come off the end. And what I'm going to do is get a reference to our widget up in the top left here. Out of this, we're going to get user widget object. Out of the retality of that, we're going to cast to our health widget, which for me is AI health widget, connecting that to the character reference there, or just event begin play for you, sorry. And then as AI health widget, or whatever you've named it, we're going to right click, promote to variable, naming this health widget ref. So sorry, I forgot to delete that earlier. So health widget ref there. So now we can access this whenever we want. And you can see if we come out of that, we can get the health that we made. But if we just come out of the normal widget, we can't get the health there. So that's why we've done that. So now we're going to make it so we can actually only see this when we're close enough. So we don't need this reference for that, but I'm going to make it first anyway. So what we're going to do is find some empty space, right click on our sphere collision in the top left components list, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click again and add event, add on component end overlap. Out of the other acts of these, we want to cast to our character. So I'm going to cast to third person character. So it's only checking to see if our player is overlapping them, so it's close enough. And do that for both of these, so cast to your character, which again could be third person, first person, or whatever you've named it. After this, we're going to get a reference to our widget here. It can just be the widget from the components list up here. And now of this, we're going to set visibility, connecting that into the first cast, duplicating it to get another set of visibility into the bottom cast off of end overlap. Off of begin overlap, the new visibility will be ticked, so we can see it, and end overlap it will be false, so we can't see it. And then if we select the widget in the top left components as well, we want to scroll down until we can find visible and untick it. So by default, we can't see it. So if we compile, save, this means we should only be able to see it in game if we're close enough. So let's test that out. I've already got my AI in here. So I walk up to one, I get close enough, I can see the health. And this works perfectly if we're close enough to the enemies. So over here, I can't see it. I can get close enough, I can. And again, you can increase that sphere collision. So you have to be closer or further away. So that's that part working. Now we just need to make it so the health is actually linked to that widget. So what I'm going to do is find the code where I'm decreasing the enemy's health. So you might have this in a macro or in a function or anything like that, but I just have it here off of this line of code. So I'm getting the health minus the damage and setting the health, which again, this is adapted from my punching tutorial. So here I already have a little gap. So what I'm going to do is get my health widget reference here. So get health widget ref. Out of that, I'm going to set health which is the float value we made in the widget. And we're gonna connect that after our first set health in this enemy AI and into the delay there. So like I said, we want to do this after we're setting the health in the AI. So here I've set health in the AI and then I'm setting it in the widget as well. And we can simply connect health into health from those two sets there. And you should get this truncate converting it from an integer to a float. Sorry, it's not called a truncate, it's just a two float. So now we're setting the health in the AI and also in the widget. And this means that we can have it specific to this character and this AI, this enemy. It won't be general and they won't all be linked. So we compile, save that, and this should be working perfectly for us. So if we hit play again, we can walk up to it. We get it, we walk away, we don't get it. And if I damage it, the health is going to go down and the other ones haven't. So if I walk to these, they're not linked. This works perfectly like so. And it's completely linked. So when they run out, they're going to die as well. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've set up the system in which we can walk close enough to an AI, the health will appear above their head on screen like so, floating above, constantly facing this player's screen like this, and if we damage them, the health will go down in the progress bar, and they're not all linked, but it works perfectly, so the health is linked to the AI that the progress bar is linked to. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.